Welcome to this new tutorial offered to you by LearnElectronics.org. In this tutorial you will learn how to design and simulate a Hyderidon receiver using System View. Start System View and create a new project. Click on the schematic icon in the workspace tree to edit the schematic's name. For example, call the new schematic receiver. By default, System View creates a data flow analysis in the workspace tree. Since we are going to design an RF system, we need to perform an RF system analysis. Thus, the data flow analysis is unnecessary and can be deleted from the workspace. Go to the RF design library, look for the components of your design using the filter box, and drag and drop them in the schematic sheet. Start drawing the schematic from the signal source to the output ports. Use the multisource input to simulate the signal from the antenna. Drag and drop the multisource model symbol into the schematic sheet. Drag the Chebyshev bandpass filter and drop it in the schematic sheet. Then, connect it to the input source. Drag the RF amplifier then drop it in the schematic sheet. The input RF signal is very weak, so the necessary amplification can be provided by adding another RF amplifier in the receiver chain. Connect the RF amplifiers with the bandpass filter output. Add to the schematic the down conversion mixer to shift the RF signal to intermediate frequencies. Connect the mixer RF port to the output of the RF amplifier. Rotate the oscillator using the rotate button located in the menu bar. Then connect the oscillator output to the LO port of the mixer. Drop in the schematic another Chebyshev bandpass filter. Then, connect it with the mixer IF port. Add to the schematic another RF amplifier. This amplifier is necessary to compensate the insertion losses of the filters and the conversion loss of the mixer. Connect the RF amplifier with the filter output. Drop in the schematic a splitter to deliver the RF signal to the in-phase and quadrature branches of the receiver. Connect the output of the RF amplifier with a splitter.
Now we can implement the two branches of the quadrature receiver that perform the conversion to baseband of the in-phase and the quadrature components of the RF signal. Add to the schematic the down converter mixer for the in-phase channel. Repeat the same operation for the mixer of the quadrature channel. Connect the RF ports of the mixers with the outputs of the splitter. Add to the schematic a 90 degree splitter to generate the in phase and quadrature tones for signal damp conversion. Connect the splitter outputs to the LO ports of the mixers. Add to the schematic a Chobish of Lopez filter for each channel. These filters are necessary to suppress the high frequencies components of the mixer's outputs. Connect the filters to the IF port of the down conversion mixers. Add an RF amplifier for each channel of the receiver. This amplifier is usually necessary to adapt the dynamic of the baseband signal to the dynamic input range of the analog to digital converters that interface the analog part of the transceiver with the digital backend that performs signal detection. Connect the input of the RF amplifiers with the output of the Lopez filters in the in phase and quadrature channels. Drag and drop in the schematic a power oscillator to perform the baseband conversion and connect it to the input of the splitter. Complete the schematic adding the output ports to terminate both the in-phase and the quadrature branches of the receiver. Click on the multisource symbol to open the properties window and start defining the characteristics of the input signal. 
The input tone is a wideband signal with a 10 MHz bandwidth, a 2450 MHz center frequency and a minus 90 dB in power. Click OK to close the Properties window. Then start editing the properties of the Chebyshev Bandpass filter. Click on the Bandpass filter to open the Properties window. The filter is a 7th order Bandpass filter with Chebyshev response, in band ripple of 0.1 dB, a lower frequency of 2400 MHz, an upper frequency of 2500 MHz, and a 2.2 dB insertion loss. Click OK to close the Properties window. Click on the first RF amplifier to open the properties window. Set the gain of the amplifier to 14.5 dB and the noise figure to 0.7 dB. Leave all the other parameters unchanged. Click OK to close the properties window. Click on the second RF amplifier to edit its properties. Set the gain to 23 dB and the noise figure to 1.7 dB. Leave all other parameters unchanged. Click OK to close the properties window. Click on the first down conversion mixer to edit its properties. Set the conversion gain of the mixer to minus 9 dB. The conversion gain is defined as the IF single sideband output power to the RF input power. A negative conversion gain denotes a power loss during the frequency conversion, which means that we are simulating a passive mixer. Set also the LO drive level to 13 dBm and the noise figure to 9 dB. Click OK to close the Properties window. Click on the first oscillator to edit its properties. The receiver uses a low side injection oscillator, since the oscillator frequency is lower than the RF frequency. The signal is down converted to an intermediate frequency of 300 MHz using an oscillator frequency of 2150 MHz. This, in turn, set the image frequency to 1850 MHz, that is low enough to be efficiently rejected by the first bandpass filter. Click OK to close the properties window. Click on the second bandpass filter to edit its properties. This is the channel filter. It is designed to have a center frequency of 300 MHz and a bandwidth of 10 MHz, equal to the signal bandwidth. The filter has a Shabayev response with an in-band ripple of 0.1 dB and insertion loss of 1.5 dB. Click OK to close the Properties window. Click on the third RF amplifier to edit its properties. Set the gain of the amplifier to 20 dB and the noise figure to 1.7 dB. Click OK to close the Properties window. Click on the mixer of the in-phase branch of the receiver to edit its properties. Set the conversion gain of the mixer to minus 5 dB, the LO drive level to 7 dBm, and the noise figure to 9 dB.
Click OK to close the properties window. Click on the mixer of the quadrature branch of the receiver to edit its properties. Configure the device with the same parameter values of the mixer in the in-phase branch. Click OK to close the properties window. Click on the Lopez filter symbol in the in-phase branch to edit its properties. Set the cutoff frequency of the filter to 5 MHz and the insertion loss to 1 dB. Click OK to close the properties window. Click on the Lopez filter symbol in the quadrature branch of the receiver to edit its properties. Set for this device, the same properties of the Lopez filter of the in-phase branch. Click OK to close the properties window. Click on the second power oscillator to edit its properties. Set the oscillation frequency to 300 MHz and the carrier power to 10 dBm. Click OK to close the properties window. Click on the baseband RF amplifier in the in-phase branch to edit its properties. Set the gain of the amplifier to 25 dB and the noise figure to 2.5 dB. Set also the output referred 1 dB compression point to 16 dBm and the output saturation power to 20 dBm. Click OK to close the properties window. Click on the RF baseband amplifier of the quadrature branch to edit its properties. Set for this device the same properties of the baseband amplifier in the in-phase chain. Click OK to close the properties window. Don't forget to edit the properties of amplifier to make them visible on the schematic. Click on the output port of the in-phase branch of the receiver to edit its properties. Change the port number and the port designator. Click OK to close the properties window. Click on the output port of the quadrature branch of the receiver to edit its properties. Then change the port number and designator. Click OK to close the properties window. Add a new RF analysis to the workspace tree. Set the channel width to 10 MHz. Click on the paths tab to edit the paths that have to be analyzed. We want to analyze the paths from the multisource input to output ports 3 and 4 respectively. Click Accept to close the simulation parameters window.
click the play button to run all the analyses. New folder called graphs to the workspace tree to store all the simulation results. Add a new graph to the project. In the type of series box, select spectrum as the type of graph to be plotted. In the data box select the receiver data sampled on both paths from multisource input to the output ports of the receiver. Check P3 to plot the output power measured on NET3, namely, the output port 3 of the receiver. Then click OK to close the graph series wizard. In the graph properties window you can edit all the properties of the graph you want to plot. This includes the type of graph, the scales of the X and Y axis and the name and title of the graph. Uncheck the X-axis autoscale and set to 20 MHz the maximum frequency to display on the graph. Click OK to close the graph properties window. Click on the graph to plot the values of the output spectrum for a given frequency. Click on the graph area to open the graph properties window. Choose a name and a title for your graph. Click OK to close the properties window. Add a new graph to the project. This time select level diagram in the type of series box. Choose the rest of your data sampled on the path 1. Namely the signal path from the multisource input to the output port 3 in the in-phase branch of the receiver. Check CGAIN to plot the cascaded gain of the receiver. Click OK to close the graph series wizard. Name and a title for your graph. Click OK to close the graph properties window. The graph displays the gain at each stage of the receiver chain from input to output. Now, add once again a new graph to the project. Select once again level diagram in the type of series box. Select the signal path from the multisource input to output port 3. Check CNDR to plot the carrier to noise and distortion ratio. Click OK to close the graph series wizard. Name and a title for your graph. OK to close the graph properties window. Measurement represents the ratio of the desired channel power to channel noise and distortion power along the path that goes from the multisource input to the output port 3. The desired channel power is the total integrated power in the main channel along the specified path. This measurement includes only the desired signal. The noise and distortion channel power is the sum of the channel noise power, the total intermodulation channel power and the phase noise channel power. Add a new graph to the project. Select once again level diagram in the type of series box. Select the path from the multisource input to the output port 3. Then check CNF to measure the cascaded noise figure of the selected path. OK to close the graph series wizard. Name and a title for your graph. Click OK to close the graph properties window. Measurement represents the cascaded noise figure in the main channel along the path from the multisource input to the output port 3. Thank you for watching. Bookmark www.learnelectronics.org in your browser and check the website periodically for new free material. Don't forget to follow Learn Electronics and the social networks. Please support Learn Electronics with a donation, a Facebook like, a plus one on Google Plus, or a tweet to your friend.